today I'm going to be talking about all of my curriculum choices for my four-year-old who's going to be doing pre-K this year. I'm kind of using that term pre-K, preschool, it, I might say it kind of interchangeably, but I want to be clear this is four-year-old preschool, which looks quite a bit different from three-year-old preschool, as you probably know. Um, I've, I've seen such a huge change in him this past year just with his excitement for learning, his kind of self-motivation to learn letters and numbers, and his readiness for a lot of just fun school stuff. We're not, you know, we're not in the serious school years yet. We still have a lot of opportunity to just play and I make the most of that. But we also have a lot of opportunity to learn and I make the most of that as well. I'm going to show you what I'm going to be using this year. All right, I'm gonna start with math. My son is in a big numbers loving phase right now. So it just seems right to start with math. We are bilingual homeschoolers, so I'm gonna share a couple of Spanish resources that I use. I'm not a native Spanish speaker or even a super confident or good Spanish speaker, but finding quality resources helps me to be able to incorporate more Spanish in teaching my sons. So this is the Gran Guaderno Montessori de Matemáticas, published by LaRousse. There's a lot of geometric stuff kind of in the beginning. It gets into numbers and, wait, it gets into numbers and some calculations toward the end. There's a lot of cutouts involved. Some of them are on kind of this shiny thick paper so you can cut them out and use them a, a few times without laminating. We've already done some pages from this so I have some of the cutouts already. But that was pretty much all I was planning to do with numbers for a while was just this. I highly resisted adding primer my mom told me about two months ago, I think he's ready for primer and you should add it. And I was like, no, no, no. He is a young child and we do not do formal lessons so soon. He's, he's very young. And she's like, I think he's ready. Well, this boy wants to do math, like anything with numbers and anything with adding. He just wants to do it. And he's already telling me things like, hey mom, three plus three equals six. So he's, he's memorizing some of the addition facts already. I don't know why, <laughs> um, but I'm kind of being forced into starting primer because at this point, if I waited too much longer, he's just gonna know everything in it <laughs> somehow. And he's always asking for numbers worksheets. So this is the teacher's guide right here. We will be starting this pretty much, we'll, we'll have already started it before you even see this video. And that is what we're doing for math. I was very interested in Kate Snow's Kindergarten Math with Confidence, but because I have primer available, this is what I'm using right now. Um, I, I kind of would prefer to buy the hard copy for Kindergarten Math with Confidence, and I can't do that right now since we're not in the US and we need math now. So we're going with this for now. Then I'm gonna call this, this is kind of the arts or humanities of our homeschool year. We're gonna be doing the Gentle and Classical Primer. This is the old cover that it used to have before she renamed it and rebranded it. So this, this is actually Primer, her second level after preschool. We did the preschool program this year. And I'm gonna just try to show you a page. Okay, I'll show you. I'll show you a different page. I'll show you a page somewhere in the middle. <laughs> I'll show you what it looks like. There are 36 units, and this is why I call it kind of arts, humanities, includes Bible. There's learning statements, which are on memory cards I have printed out that we will be using. There's always a virtue song, wonder tale, that's for memorization, a wonder tale that you read each week, nursery rhyme to read each week. You read uh, some manner stories. You're learning a hymn, you have some kind of math and memory work skills you work on. Um, you have a catechism question, a Bible story for each week, a Bible verse to memorize, and there's also a Robert Louis Stevenson poem, and either an art or a music learning point for each week. So this is definitely a morning time, a humanities or riches type of curriculum. And we will have already started this by the time this video comes out. We're starting it straight after Gentle and Classical Preschool. I'll just show you a few pieces for it. These are the art prints and the art concepts that they have illustrations for that we'll get to look at and do our activities with into our morning time routine. This has the art activities in it and I'll show you couple of the books I got. Um, so this is one of their Wonder Tales 
books. And something sneaky I did was I decided this didn't have to be just an English arts. I could get some of the titles that they were going after. Pretty much all the titles are very much the classics of English children's literature for the most part. So the very, very iconic stories, um, Beauty and the Beast, some of the major fairy tales, and just some of these really classic stories. But I was sneaky and got some of them in Spanish. Whichever ones I could reasonably and affordably get in Spanish, I got them in Spanish. So this is just another way that we're fitting more Spanish into our day. This is a way to make <laughs> including Spanish in our lives easy for me. And we also, do the kindergarten morning binder. We did. We used to do the preschool morning binder. He was really, um, he had done all the pages so many times he was getting bored with it. So I went ahead and okay, yeah, we'll get the kindergarten morning binder which just has slightly more challenge, some new pages. He loves the number pages especially. You'll see a theme going in here. So this is something where we'll do the name and date page. Let me see if I can find the date. The date page is pretty cool. Right here, we'll do this date page where he has to write the date and then we put a 10 block or two 10 blocks or a couple one blocks here. We do that page every day and then we'll do a letter page and a number page every day. So it's like a little, little, little bit of phonics and math work right here. There's some fun different pages. Once we get through all the number pages, we'll do these. Actually, he does the addition pages all the time <laughs> because he's obsessed with addition at the moment. <laughs> Then for science, so that's kind of fine motor skills, phonics, math, just a daily routine of basic skills. For science, I've already mentioned this, we are doing gentle and classical nature. And I'll show you a glimpse at a unit. This is a very literature-based kind of nature study curriculum, learning some very basic facts. We are doing the level one memory statements, basic facts about different types of animals. Uh, and we have books that we get to read every every week, every unit. So for this unit, it's Thimbleberry Stories and the Nature Notebook by Rothman. We have really liked the Sapo y Seppo or Frog and Toad stories throughout the whole first term of the of the curriculum. Those have been very much favorites. I. We may even reread this again later in the curriculum because I think my son just <laughs> really enjoys those stories. That's kind of our very gentle preschool science. Then for our Spanish phonics, we are doing Aventuras del Abecedario. And this is what I created, what I released, what is available on my website um, for sale for a very affordable price. And it's available in English as well. So if you are looking for a literature based pre-K phonics curriculum, go ahead and head over there. This is what our teacher's guide looks like. We always have a book of the week. We have some songs, including traditional songs in Spanish for the Spanish edition, traditional children's songs in English for the English edition. We have activities, so um, this is really helpful to me as a non-native Spanish speaker because if I have the basic instructions and the basic vocabulary written down, it's very easy for me to work from it. Whereas if I have nothing written down, I will freeze up and I will speak English instead. And then this is how I'm organizing all the worksheets. There's a lot of worksheets in this program. I give probably eight plus worksheets for each letter. And so here we have C and different, just a whole bunch of different fun little preschool activities, minimal writing involved, very interactive, um, a lot of the worksheets will have opportunities and invitations to get up and go around your house and look for the letter A or B or whatever. And this is all using, so this is Spanish, so it's all using Spanish words um, that begin with A. So we don't have, you know, S for spider, we have A for spider, A araña. And so this is going to be really good. This is, this is how we're going to be regularly incorporating Spanish books, Spanish songs, and doing a lot of Spanish vocabulary through the worksheets and also, of course, learning our Spanish letter sounds, which are mostly very similar to our English letter sounds. Now, what am I doing for his pre-K phonics in English? And to be honest, at the moment, my plan is nothing. And that's because 
he's more advanced in his knowledge of letters in English. I feel like much more advanced in English than he is in Spanish. So, you know, at this year, he's four years old. I have time to just play with it. I have no need to kind of rush him beyond where he's currently at with English sounds. Just take some time to work on our Spanish letter sounds, Spanish letter names, build our Spanish vocabulary, kind of growing confidence in that minority language for us and just, you know, kind of gradually, naturally let him grow up a little and see how it goes with English phonics. He doesn't do nothing with it. We do have the kindergarten morning binder and my mom actually does do a little bit of <laughs> phonics work with him when I'm doing Chinese lessons with my sister. She usually will just, this is because this is what homeschooling grandmas are like. She'll sit down at the table with him in a notebook and just write letters in the notebook and have him write letters in the notebook and talk about their sounds or try to blend two letters together. So it's kind of just DIY, just a little bit of familiarity. And he already does a lot. Like when I'm reading a book, he'll just point out random letters all throughout the pages and so on like that. So I, I am not, I'm, I'm not ready to start like teaching him to read yet. So that's why I'm like, let's, Let's just take some time. We'll do Aventuras del Abecedario. We'll take some time to really, really grow our Spanish skills and our Spanish phonics basis. I'm hoping it's not gonna be too confusing. I know it can bring some confusion, but kids are smart. They will, they will figure it out, so I'm not too worried about that. And yeah, that is our pre-K plan for this next year. Oh, I almost forgot. <laughs> We're starting with primer for our arts and humanities but I'm very much hoping to add in sunlight pre-K after we're done with primer. Uh, and the reason for that is sunlight tends to be a little bit more on the advanced side. I feel like primer is easier than the books in sunlight pre-K. So, and also I don't have the ability to get the physical books of sunlight pre-K right now. <laughs> so we'll do gentle and classical primer. And then whenever we finish that, I think we'll still have plenty of time to start sunlight pre-K because I'm not worried about, you know, starting kindergarten at a certain very specific month or whatever. I think we'll have plenty of time. So that is kind of my later on into the pre-K year plan. All right, I'll be seeing you. Go ahead, leave me some comments. What are you doing for preschool if you're doing for preschool? If you're not doing preschool anymore, what do you miss most about this amazing stage of early learning? All right, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.